Hi everyone! In this video, we will be graphing some more linear inequalities. In these examples, our linear inequalities will be either horizontal or vertical lines. Now how do we know if they're horizontal or vertical? Let's take a look at this example. x is less than or equal to 2. Now the way I like to remember the direction is that if it's x is less than or equal to a number, it's going to be on the x-axis. And when it's x, it's going to be a vertical line. Now let's take a look a little bit deeper into this. This point that I just put on the graph is the point 2, 0. Other points, we can have the point 2, 1, the point 2, 3 if we wanted, the point 2, negative 2, the point 2, negative 5, and so on. But in all of these, our x coordinate is 2. So that's how I know it's going to be a vertical line. So if you just remember, whenever it's x, it's vertical. If this was a y, it would be just the opposite and it would be a horizontal line. Now going back to our inequalities, we have our points for our line. Now let's look at our inequality sign. It's less than or equal to. And that equal to component, remember, means that our line is going to be a solid line. Now our last part is deciding where to shade. Now there's two different ways that I've found we'd like to remember this. We can either just think about it logically. X is less than or equal to 2, which means that we're going to shade everything that's less than or equal to 2. Right, because all of these numbers here are less than 2. Or we can go back to our way and test a point. Again, let's test 0, 0 and plug it in for x. Right? 0 is less than or equal to 2. That's a true statement. So wherever the 0, 0 is, that's included in our solution because 0, 0 is part of the shaded area. So we know we're correct. Let's go on to the next one. In this one, we have y is greater than 1. Now we'll see this in the opposite way of the x. Because it's y is greater than 1, it's going to be on the y axis. And it's going to be horizontal. Now again, just like we did before, just to show you why, all the points we choose, we can choose 2, 1. We can choose 4, 1. We can choose negative 3, 1. You get the point. The y's are all 1. Now going back to our inequality, this is just a plain greater than sign. So therefore our line is going to be dotted. And our last step, let's figure out where to shade. Again, two ways to do that. We can think about it logically. The y's are all greater than 1. So I want to shade the whole section where the y's are greater than 1. So we're going to shade up from 2, 3, 4, and so on. Or if you wanted to, you can double check by testing our point. Again, my favorite point, 0, 0. Let's test it. And because it's not part of our shaded area, it should be false. Let's see. Let's plug in 0, 0 for x and y. 0 is greater than 1. That is a false statement. So 0, 0, this point is not a solution. And we didn't highlight it, so we're correct. Now go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Keep in mind that whenever it's x 
is greater than or less than a number, it's going to be a vertical line. Whenever it's y, it's going to be a horizontal line. You get started and then come back to check your work. Okay, our inequality is y is less than or is less than negative 3. So we know on the y-axis it's going to be negative 3 and it's going to be horizontal. Now our inequality sign, less than, tells us that our line is going to be dotted. Our last step is to figure out where to shade. y is less than negative 3, so we're going to go to the, shade the numbers that are less than negative 3. We're shading down. Just to double check, we can plug in our point. Again, plugging in any point, you can always do that. I just like 0, 0 because it's easy. 0 is less than negative 3. That is false. So good. 0, 0 is not shaded and it is not a solution. Alright, good job.